We're opening to our scripture from the book of Acts. We're reading the first 11 verses of the first chapter. This is the one where Jesus uh, departs from the disciples and ultimately returns to be with God. We're looking at Ascension Sunday. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven and to giving instructions to the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While they was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So our title is Agape and Agape, or do we pronounce it Agape and Agape? Let us clear up why we seem to be repeating ourselves. The first agape is for agape, as in standing there, staring up into the sky as Jesus ascended back to God in heaven. That is the first reason for agape. The second agape is agape, as in agape love. Unselfish love, divine love, spiritual love. So this is meant to be read as agape and agape. The first time is for staring. The second time is for God's love. So let us talk about agape in further detail. Do you remember your first helium balloon? Do you remember how it felt to hold the string of your first helium balloon? It felt buoyant. It brought a smile to our face. That string in our hand gave us a sense of power over a miracle. In our hand was the controlling string of one lighter-than-air object, and we were masters of that little part of the universe. Hopefully this did not happen to you, but in our excitement, did we let go of the string for just a second? Did that balloon get out of our hand? Did we watch with shock as our balloon shot out of sight? Did we begin to cry as the reality sank in that our balloon was gone forever? Did our parents try to console us? Did they say we should have tied it to your wrist? Did they offer to buy a second one to, and tie it down this time? The reason we are talking about balloons this morning is to get an idea of how the disciples felt to have Jesus shoot out of sight like a helium balloon. Would their inner child have felt just like our inner child when we saw our first balloon go out of sight? We are talking about this so we can understand the look in the disciples' face. They stand there staring into the sky. They stand there with their mouth agape. There they stand having all the mixed emotions if we were lucky to have Jesus for as long as we did. And did he not tell us that he was going back to see his Father in heaven? Unlike a helium balloon, Jesus was not gone forever. He was not gone like a red balloon on Cornhusker Saturday, although the red balloon on Cornhusker Saturday might be gone for good. But that's another tradition, another story. So we step into the shoes of our disciples. What must it have been like to have known Jesus for three years and then have to say goodbye. Do the disciples remember the glorious Galilee of Jesus? There were the crowds and the miracles. There were the wise words spoken in the high places and the low places. There, there would be that wonderful supper in the upper room with all those special words and all the new meanings. And 
there would come the shock of the arrest and very bad Friday. The disciples would remember the cross and the resurrection. And, and they, then thankfully they would realize their Easter joy, the brand new joy of forgiveness. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. The disciples saw the second chance of resurrection and forgiveness firsthand. Jesus was back and he's talking again. The disciples get to see him again and the good times are back again. But then boom, like a helium balloon, Jesus is gone. Up he goes out of sight. There is no string to pull him back down. All good things must end, right? Yes, it is true. Jesus was not meant to stay on planet earth forever. He was meant to go back to God. But then what about the disciples? What are they supposed to do? This is why the two angels show up. They're there to get the disciples moving. Why are you standing there staring up into the sky? Jesus has moved on. It is time for you to be moving on. Jesus came to jumpstart a tradition that had become stale. Okay, enough time spent being a gate. Now it is time to get back to the agape. Jesus came to remind the disciples. That their tradition began with the love of God and the love of neighbor. Now Jesus has been here loving you and loving Israel. Jesus' job is done. Your job is just beginning. Jesus has given you the jump start. Now jump to it. It's time to get jumping, pardon the expression, jumping for Jesus. The time for being agape is over. The time for agape has started. Jesus has gone back to heaven. Yes, it's true. But he has not gone from our lives forever. His resurrected self has gone back to heaven. But his spiritual self is always with us. See, Jesus came here to get into our lives, get into our hearts. Jesus knew he needed to get into the hearts of his disciples because he knew he would go back to heaven. Jesus knew he would not always be there in person. He knew his Jesus self would go back. He wanted his Jesus spirit to stay in his disciples. We are in the same boat as the disciples. We would like to stare up into heaven to see if Jesus might be at least likely to wave at us. But he needed to get back to heaven. The disciples needed to get going. There was a world of new disciples for them to make. They needed to go to the four corners of the world and make more disciples. They could not stare up in space forever. We cannot stand around being agape. Our agape self needs to move on. We need to shift from agape to agape. The Jesus of heaven remains in our hearts. Jesus is not gone unless our heart is gone. If we keep our heart for Jesus, we keep Jesus, period. We don't have to stand there staring up into the sky. We can move on. We can move on in agape. Jesus, agape love. Amen.